Previously on Accelerate, we reviewed the 2021 Lincoln Nautilus, but today we've got another Benzito for the channel and this is the 2021 Mercedes-Benz AMG GLB 35. Look at this plaque, 100K. We have 90,000 subscribers, that is amazing. Thank you guys for subscribing, but from now on guys, we need commenting. We need you guys to comment. Comment about whatever you want. Comment about the lights, the studio, my shoes, my skinny ankles, my receding hairline, or this GLB Mercedes-Benz. You see, this is the fourth Mercedes-Benz AMG we brought to the channel. We've done the A. And obviously next in the alphabet is the B. B for bizarre because this comes as a seven passenger. Yes, you can get this as an optional seven passenger, but what's even more bizarre is that the letter above it, which is a C, the Mercedes-Benz GLC, doesn't come as a seven passenger. What? So it's important to note that press has come out about the EQB, that's the future of electric in the B. And because this is a B, it's very important for us to review this thing for you. But also, why would anybody buy this over a GLC? Again, seven passenger, no seven passenger. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the front. I'm gonna talk about the side. I'm gonna talk about the back. I'm also gonna talk about the interior like we always do. I'm gonna talk about the drive and will I buy this car? And why does Mercedes-Benz even make this car? All right, let's start with the front here. And the front is nice in Mercedes-Benz. And we'll start with this big headlight housing. Now it does have two individual daytime running lights and they have a sort of bluish, purplish undertone. And yes, they are LEDs because it says LED high performance right in this headlight. Now moving below, you do have sort of your parktronic sensors in the front bumper as you see here, but it's closed off because there's no actual intake here. It does though have no chrome. You see all these little black pieces are because this has the night package, which means there's absolutely no chrome on this car. It is all covered in black and we'll get to the side of the car and all that fun stuff. But if we talk about this big, massive, what they call Pan Americana grill. Now this grill, grill is an AMG grill because that's how everybody kind of knows it nowadays. They don't call it Pan Americana because they put this grill pretty much on all AMGs. Now, that's one thing I wish Mercedes would actually stop doing. They'd give us a grill that's close to it, but not this exact grill that's on the V8s because the V8s are sort of like that AMG passion you need. But what is a little bit different actually is this Flava Flav huge monster emblem. And now that emblem is actually not recessed. It is actually sticking out a little bit as you can clearly see because there's no radar behind this. There's just a camera that's supposed to be right here, which is missing on this bad boy. Now moving along here, you'll see the AMG logo right there, which can be obviously pulled off and put a big one to match this big, huge monster emblem. Would you guys do that or leave this little guy? Now speaking of camera, obviously you guys are gonna say yes. Well, how does it display the front vision? Because it does, when you actually put it in drive and you sit at a traffic light, the screen inside shows you the front view on the cameras and that's because it's actually hiding right up here, which is really strange why they have this plastic piece down here. It tells me that they're obviously using this part somewhere else. Now, one thing I will say on the front of this car, it's very big, like it's, it just, it, it's like objects appear larger than they actually are because this thing is massive in the front, but the vehicle is not that big. So speaking of vehicle and not that big, let's check out the engine. That is because you will not find a six cylinder under this hood. This is a four cylinder. Now Mercedes-Benz does a great job with hammering out monster power out of a four cylinder. This inline four cylinder makes 302 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Now it's primarily front wheel drive and it's about 80% front wheel drive and 20% rear wheel drive. Yes, it does have torque vectoring and yes, it does have a whole bunch of, you know, different modes and all that fun stuff. But really, 302 horsepower, and this thing propels itself from zero to 60 miles an hour in 5.2 seconds. That is fast, and it sounds decent too. Now we have the GLA AMG 45, which is one step above this. So are we gonna get the 45 in the B class? I don't know, I really hope, because that'll be fun as heck. You heard me right. This seven passenger does have an eight speed, what Mercedes calls the AMG speed shift eight speed DCT, which essentially means it's not a torque converter. It's not your typical automatic. It is a fast 
gearbox. Now, moving along the side here is where it really gets interesting. This little Rhino box, because it kind of looks like a Rhino, it's strong, beefy, but it's also sort of wagonish, avantish, really interesting side dynamics here. But if we start off with the wheels, you do have the silver painted AMG cross drilled 13.8 inch rotors, which is a pretty big size for a vehicle this size. And you got 13s in the back. As far as wheels go, you can get them in 19s, 20s, and 21s. These are 20s. Now the 20s and 21s, you can get them in black or silver, which is kind of cool. You have five different wheel options, but let's check out as we do an accelerate here, the inner fender liner. These things are not carpeted. They are plastic. What? And on the back, they are carpeted. Hmm. We're starting to see that. We're starting to see a mix. We're, not, we're starting to see not all fully carpeted or not all fully plastic, sort of half and half. Kind of strange, but hey, it's the way of the world, I guess. Now, this thing does have a performance formatic. It's not a formatic plus, it's just your typical formatic, but is their performance version. And it is obviously turbo in case you didn't know. Now everything in this specific vehicle does have a night package. So there's no chrome, as I mentioned, except for the door handles, because all this is all black. This is black. This is all black. That is all black. And of course the mirrors are black and they're heated and they do give you this fancy light. So let's open up the door. Well, maybe not the mirrors do, but Hey, there's your fancy light. Now, let me ask you this. What do you think this actually looks like? So a lot of people will say this is like a baby G wagon or maybe like a baby GLS, but I would say, that it's probably the best looking Kia Soul I've ever seen. What? I was gonna wait to the end to tell you guys this, but this thing drives like a car. It's low, it's like a SUV that's slammed. Think like Element, think like boxy, think cool cars that were boxy that were slammed. Yeah, that's coming a huge comeback. So Mercedes is smart because they have a lot of different vehicles now. So why not throw this one in the mix? It drives like a car, it looks like an SUV, you can convince the wife, this is an SUV. This is not an Avant. This is not a slammed station wagon because she does not want to hear any of that. She wants to hear SUV. And here we go, GLB. I'm still trying to figure out how they make this as seven passengers. So this is the end of it here. And this is a chair and that's the door. So that's the chair. So here I am. Yeah, seven passenger. Think Tesla Model Y. How do they get a seven passenger in there? They can get a seven passenger in here. All right, so when we want to get out of this easy to get in and out of GLB, it's got something called under wrap doors, which essentially means you don't dirty the back of your skinny calves or pants. You actually just get in, get out, and you know, your pants are clean. Now, as far as suspension goes, this thing does have adaptive ride control AMG suspension, which you can actually adjust because it has damping suspension. You ask how much fuel can you put in this gas tank? You can put in 60 liters. Now, let's go to the back. So what AMG does really, really well is they actually attack and basically murder the aftermarket game. Because if you're an aftermarket guy and you're like, I want to build a bumper for an AMG GLB, well, they have you beat because this back bumper is awesome. It is wide. It's got such good detail in it. It's got a huge, massive lower valence. It's all black. They've got this honeycomb feel right there. And well, they have this nice little tucked away spoiler. But if you were aftermarket, you would maybe want to change your business plan. A business plan of where do we relocate this rear wiper? You see, this rear wiper should not be here because they have lots of experience of this breaking with all the snow. This should be hiding underneath here. So aftermarket boys, build me a wiper underneath there, under the third brake light. That's where I'd be putting my money. Yes, it is not black, it is chrome. The AMG sign is chrome, along with the GLB 35 here. If this was my car, I would get rid of this 35. See you later. It does have a fancy camera that does pop down a rear backup camera. It also does have a nice fancy chrome sill when you want to load stuff in the trunk. Speaking of trunk, we'll give it a kick and she shall open like in this part of the video. So here's where the win happens and it is accessibility. You see, look where I'm standing. It's very easy to load something on this load floor. It's very low. I can just sit in it. I don't have to get up or jump in it, but how much room do we really have? So in terms of length, or depth, I should say, we've got just about three feet. But the real win, I think, is the entry points. You see, you have 42 inches here. This is a subcompact SUV, or compact, depending on which country you live. It's 31 in height. So this is a very big entry point. You can put a lot of stuff in here. Now, the seats do fold down, obviously. You've got 40, 20, 40. And if you do have the seven passenger, or the back two seats, the third row, they call it, you can split them down 50, 50. Now, if you don't get it, like this one does not have it, you can actually lift this up. And underneath here, you don't have a spare tire. You do have your subwoofer there for your sound speaker, and you do have a first aid kit. 
All right, so I'm in the back of a GLB Mercedes-Benz. Now, let's open and close this door and feel the quality. Yes, it feels solid and heavy. The door handle feels light, but the door itself feels heavy. And when I close this door, we'll hear thump. Now, sitting in the back seat here, now these seats do slide backwards and forwards about five and a half inches from this direction to this direction. So the reason they have this is because whether you get a five passenger or a seven passenger, this is exactly the same. They just build it one way. That's why you saw me joking around in the back trying to put my elbow in this little hole they have here because it's the same paneling. There's no difference, saving cost. Now, as far as usability and phones go, I do have a little pocket here, very small, and I have one single USB-C. You would think you'd have more than one USB-C. Now, the other thing that also bothers me about something like this is the fact they only have two-zone climate control. They should at least have three-zone climate control. It's not a huge car, but it is a seven-passenger after all. And yeah, they do give me two sunroofs, which is pretty cool. Can't complain about that, but I just like that better venting, if you ask me. Now, let's see these seats. They fold 40, 20, 40. So let's put this middle one down, pull this handle. It folds down and yeah, you can throw skis right through. I don't have heated seats in this specific model in the back, just in the front. And I have to pull this button to push this thing back. And yeah, the quality of this leather feels kind of not the best. Nice vinyl though. Now, if you ask me, I haven't seen a lot of cars out there that do have ventilated seats when it comes to Alcantara or suede, they just don't make it. Because you just think about the quality of it. It's usually made with like sort of a coarser leather, a harder leather, a leather such as this one they have here. This should have perforations on this specific leather, but on Alcantara, just not easy to find. Front seat of the GLB. Now, very easy to get in and out. So in terms of ease, it's very easy. How does it sit in terms of height? It is not high like an SUV. It's kind of between a car and an SUV. It feels very car-like. Now everything's kind of higher than where I'm sitting. So I feel like I'm low. So if you want to sit high or want that feeling of sitting higher, this is not going to give it to you. This is a basically a car with a higher outer shell, if that makes any sense. Also, something I've noticed is the way these door panels are sort of set, they're sort of set inward. So the handle, which is similar to a G-Wagon, the way it's designed here, is actually sort of embedded closer to the outside than the top of the panel. So it's sort of shaped this way. It makes that impression that you're wide and you have a lot of space. Uh, AMG makes the best, or Mercedes, but has the best steering wheels. Like nobody competes with them when it comes to steering wheels at this price point. You gotta spend over a hundred grand to get all the sort of feel and visceral sort of design that you get with this. And it's really loud because it's raining like crazy here and now. And we're back with our AMG fancy wheel. Now this has great paddle shifters, they're nice and high, and they're just out of the box. Nobody does a better job than, as I mentioned, Mercedes-Benz with this wheel. Now it does have the center 12 o'clock, so you know that you're going straight. It's very Formula One inspired. Now it does have on the bottom here what they call the AMG drive unit, which is essentially buttons on the steering wheel. Now they do have, if you don't get this, you have buttons down here so you can adjust whether you want to manually switch your gears, your stability program, uh, your suspension settings and that kind of stuff. But you can also just go comfort, sport, sport plus, and then individual. And then on the left side here, you can choose whether you want to have your auto start and stop on, all by simply just pressing this AMG drive unit. Now it does have suede on the side and obviously leather on the top, so nice and strong and sturdy. So steering wheel, awesome, really good quality. This part here, really good quality. Um, again, this is sort of the lower priced, or as Mercedes-Benz would say, priced for pleasure. Now moving down here, you have the HVAC controls that are really, really good quality. There's no skipping in terms of moolah there. Going down to the center console here, you do have your wireless charging, which does not have a cover. It's very easy to put your phone in, easy to get in, very easy to get out. They do have this little hand here sort of holding it down because it doesn't have a cover on it. It's just kind of wide open. It does have a USB-C and it does have a cigarette lighter where you can plug something in to adapt to whatever phone you have. Now it does have two cup holders, decent size, and they're sort of free from obstructions. So you can put whatever you want in there. It does have your typical sort of touchpad that you can slide left and right to adjust your dual 10 and a quarter inch screens. Now you can get dual seven inch screens. I would find them really small. I would say you sort of have to get this 10 and a quarter inch screen to get the real feel of this, of this sort of vibe that you're feeling in here because this vibe has 64 different ambient colors you can pick and Mercedes-Benz has the best ambient colors because we've already reviewed Club AMG right here. But if you're looking for more USBs, there are two more USBs hiding in this glove box that is fairly deep, good size, nothing crazy. It doesn't slide backwards and forwards because it's sort of a long armrest here. 
And yeah, that's the feel of it. As far as the screen goes, we'll jump into a little bit, but I've already sort of gone in depth in most of the AMG screens now, being this our fourth one. And here's some visuals for you. Other than that, let's take this thing for a drive. So welcome to the GLB. The GLB, if you'd care to know, is made in Mexico. Now, a lot of people say, oh, if it's built in Mexico, it's not built that, you know, the quality's not that good, that kind of stuff. Except in today's world, good luck even trying to find a car. With the chip shortage, it is very difficult to find a vehicle to buy. So you can't really be picky on where it's built. What you can be picky on is how it drives and how it feels. So let's go find out. Now, if the title's video said seven seater wagon that has launch control, I'd get a million clicks. Hmm, here we are today. Race start. Oof. Oh my God, the shifting is. So yes, it does have a mode that aggressively shifts. Well, welcome back. This does have an aggressive mode that shifts tighter and stronger when you're in race start, which is cool. Seven passenger. Yes, not a wagon. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> All right, and on the throttle here. Let's get some downshifting going on. Flip to the ground. Mercedes-Benz does a really good job with how quick their digital tack goes. And it's like so immersive in terms of like being on, you know, like we're on, we see it, we're like adrenaline is always pumping up and down by seeing it. It's not a gauge that's like slow to go. It's like it's quick and fast. This is a really good cluster. We've always talked about this cluster already in the other Benz cars we've reviewed. Let's hear some backfiring. So this, the 35 doesn't backfire as heavy as the 45. Now the GLA 45 we reviewed, it backfires like crazy, lots of pops and crackles. This doesn't pop as crackle as much. You can get it, but it's not as aggressive. It's more silent. Now the GLB doesn't have race mode. It just has Sport Plus, and it's primarily front wheel drive. I can feel that it's front wheel drive. I don't feel the back coming out any way, shape, or form. Under full load, it transfers 30% to the back. It's still got 70% on the front. Under normal load, it's 80, 20. Now, let's talk about handling here. It is still pretty flat. And what I've noticed is people that drive in the other direction think this is like a sports car because the front looks really sporty and then they pass it and they're like, that's a wagon? Hmm. Kind of really reminds me of a Mini Cooper. The bigger one, obviously. The countrymen or the clubmen or whatever they call it but it's just bigger so it's funny because this is very car like it's tricky me when I look back even at four plus on bumpy roads it's still very soft it's not super firm and that's kind of smart because I guess if you buy the 45 which they don't make as yet but in the GLA 45 it's definitely more firm it's definitely more on the back this is very smooth in comfort because again it has damp suspension it is softer it's what you expect. It's just smooth, comfortable. Wouldn't even know anything about it. Matter of fact, if somebody jumps in this car in comfort and drives it under normal load, they just feel like it's kind of slow. They wouldn't think anything AMG about it. But as soon as you put it into Sport Plus, it kind of wakes up, throttles more aggressive, and then sort of lives, which is pretty typical of AMG stuff or any sort of performance-based product when you throw it into Sport mode. But it's not overly sporty. The suspension is pretty smooth. The handling is good it's flat it just sits very low to the ground because of how I'm sitting and even my seating position is very low to the ground and my way my legs are I'm not like sleeping in the car it sort of has this sort of knee bent feature where my knees kind of have to be bent to sit straight I can't exactly lie down in this car it's really confusing when you're trying to figure out what the perfect car is because usually that's one car that does more than one car is supposed to do like this in the front, when you drive across it, you realize this is kind of a sporty car. But then when you pass it, like the cop just did, he's like, hmm, heat score from the front, but then it's got a wagon in the back. So in the same hand, you could also say like 
really cool because you can drive like a sports car. It's got launch control. It feels like a car. Handling feels like a car. But you can fit almost seven people in it. So it wins on the husband front. It wins on the kids front. And it wins on the wife front. That sounds like a perfect SUV. Hmm. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.